Well, as uh, my, my hope is that, as Tom said, that you would see how each of you are actually caught up, not in these guys' stories, but uh, the story that God is writing here in our community, in our city, in our nation, in our uh, world, that you are attached to something so much uh, bigger. And, and to help us do that, we're just going to do a really short reflection uh, on 2 Corinthians uh, 5. And I'm just going to read just the one verse and then uh, a couple in a, in a second. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation is here. The old has gone and the new is here. And this phrase, in Christ, it appears over 150 times in the New Testament. It's saying that um, in a, like a spiritual way, those who are uh, following the way of Jesus, their identity, even their sense of being, is now wrapped up into the person of Jesus. One way of understanding that is um, what happens to Jesus, spiritually speaking, now happens uh, to and within us. And so where Jesus dies on a cross to uh, atone for our sins. Spiritually speaking, uh, we now die with Jesus. Our sin, our shame, uh, as we've heard already, our disconnection uh, is put to death in Jesus. And in the same way as he rises from the grave, uh, we rise with him uh, into this new life, hope, purpose, peace, and power. And uh, what the Christian church throughout the ages, throughout the last 2,000 years of its existence is has used this symbol of baptism to represent that going down, dying uh, to the old and rising into the new, the new creation uh, of a new life, a new purpose, a new hope in Jesus. Um, But uh, because God is good, um, that would be enough. If it was just you die and then you rise again, spiritually speaking, into this new life with Jesus, that would have been good enough. But because God is so good, he gives us more. We don't just uh, rise to this new life, this um, new life in Jesus, and then just endure the rest of life. We don't kind of like hold on until this future where everything is going to be okay. No, Paul says this, the new creation is here. It's not that the new creation is coming. It's not that the new creation is now something that we hold on to, but the new creation is here. And so as you and as these guys live out at their baptism, something so much greater than just rising to new life happens, you are given a commission. You are given a purpose, a calling, a sense of worth, partnering with God. And your mission is to partner with God in his mission to make all things new, to proclaim his kingdom come in your life and the world around you uh, and beyond. And so that is why, um, as we read, continue reading in verse 19, we read this, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people sins against them, hence the baptism. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. And then this, gosh, you read some lines when you like really kind of think about them. You just like, that seems a bit crazy. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal to the world through you. When I was um, 18, I uh, encountered Jesus for the first time. And my friend had invited me to a festival with a thousand other teenagers, all sweaty and smelly, uh, in a field. Um, uh, and we were getting together in a tent. And my friend uh, had invited me along to this thing called Soul Survivor. Um, and uh, f- for those of you who have not heard of Soul Survivor, I was in that camp and I felt like I was going for some sort of like Mission Impossible, like fight to the death, lone survivor adventure camp. Um, and it it was more like soft rocks and cups of teas and lovely people. Um, uh, and so I went anyway, um, and I went not really particularly looking to become a Christian, but I just fancy, fancied a bunch of the girls in that youth group. Um, and I felt like it increased my chances if I was like stuck with them for five days, and it did not increase any of those uh, chances. But um, during one of the meetings, uh, I was sat on the floor um, uh, whilst there was 
worship going on in this big tent with thousands of young people. And I heard this voice speak to me. Uh, This voice spoke directly into my head and my heart and said, John, I want to use you to help build my kingdom. But first, you have to follow me. I want to use you to help build my kingdom, but first you have to follow me. And that day, as I prayed with my friend, I made a commitment to follow Jesus. My life really began at that moment. And fundamentally, this is the call of God on your life, to follow Jesus and to work with him in the building of his kingdom where you are, through who you are. And this is how Paul describes our commissioning. We are Christ's ambassadors, as though God was making his appeal to the world through people like you and me. Um, So let's just pause on that for a second. What does an ambassador do uh, well an ambassador represents a, a nation or team or a company uh, and goes into new situations on behalf of that team uh, to represent uh, and to advocate and to celebrate the good things of their team and their culture and to bring the values and the DNA into uh, the new environment that they have been set and and this is how it works with your commissioning To be an ambassador for the kingdom of God is to carry the peace and the presence, the values, the likeness, the DNA, the kind of essence of what it is uh, to follow Jesus and to partner with God to usher that into the world around you, bringing his goodness, his life, his light. I think, um, particularly when I think about the kingdom of God, I find it helpful to um, think about it like a puzzle. And um, imagine with me for a moment that um, I'd gone and bought myself a 1,000 piece puzzle of an aerial view of Southampton for the sake of this analogy which is exactly what I've done, if you can't see at the back. Um, uh, I bought myself this lovely puzzle piece. Um, uh, And uh, I think about the kingdom of God like this, like um, Jesus... His life, full of, as we've heard, the Prince of Peace, the wonderful counsellor, the mighty one, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the way, the truth of life. Jesus is the full picture. Everything about him, his uh, revealed nature, what God is like, is this picture. Jesus is the full picture and his expression of his rule and reign as people live empowered by him, living out uh, empowered by uh, the spirit of God is where his, uh, his kingdom starts to get established. But um, we are not God. That's so weird, that worked this morning. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to do that. Um, uh, we are uh, not God because um, uh, we are not the king of this particular kingdom, and so we can only see in part. Uh, we don't get to see the full picture that he sees. God has the full picture. He is the one who is working all things together for the good of those who love him. But we get to just see this one or two little bits. It's, it's mad to me to think about that line as though God were making his appeal through us, that God has primarily chosen to reveal this picture uh, to the world, this picture of who Jesus is, what he is like, what it is like to follow him. He has chosen to establish his kingdom primarily through his church. That's like people like you and me, the misfits, the insecure the easily bruised, the easily angered, the proud and the timid, the hopeful and the anxious, the broken and the limping, people like you and me. That is who God has chosen to reveal his reconciling love to the world through. This is what you're an ambassador for. And it's, so it's like as you follow the way of Jesus, he commissions you and he says, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is you're not going to see the whole picture, but I'm going to give you like a little piece. You're going to see your little piece of this bigger picture, like you're holding this piece of the puzzle. And because God loves you and he cares for you, and more than that, he actually believes in you far more than you believe in yourself. And he says, I want to work with you on that little patch. I want to work with you through your environment 
through your skills, uh, through your passions and your dreams and your desires, through the things that you've been trained in and the things that you haven't been trained in. I want to work with you to bring about my kingdom come in this little section. God is calling you to become an ambassador to the world as though God were making his appeal through you as a signpost to his kingdom. And let me just be super clear right now. My particular calling was into church ministry and to um, uh, what is sometimes referred to as full-time ministry. I fundamentally disagree with that phrase. You are in full-time ministry because you are called to be an ambassador for the things of the kingdom as a student, as a business owner, as a teacher, as a nurse, as a single mom, as a mechanic, wherever you are, whatever you do, in this moment to be an ambassador for the things of his kingdom. And these ambassadors, they are already living amongst you. As I look around our church, I think of people who are just picking up their piece and just faithfully plugging away at the things of God. I think of uh, Jay, who's holding his piece of the puzzle, using his experience and skills as a lawyer to seek justice for some of the world's most oppressed and marginalized people. Jay actually um, transformed some of the legislation in our nation to change the Slavery Act uh, five or six years ago, just doing his job, the things that he's trained in, uh, and the things that he is passionate about. I think of my wife, Hannah, um, as a magazine editor. She is helping some of the largest companies uh, around the globe to think about what could their purpose beyond profit be. Not just to think about profit margins, but to think how can you leave a lasting legacy of change for good. Through Hannah's um, uh, interviews and writing and consultancy, uh, they don't know it, but those companies are actually starting to usher in some of the DNA and the values of the kingdom of God. I think of Maisie, who uh, against all of the odds, against being told many, many times, felt a conviction and a calling to become a nurse, to show the care and the compassion and the kindness and the love of Christ for some of our most sick. I think of Charlotte and Mike who are holding their piece of the puzzle, writing songs of healing and freedom, pointing to a bigger beauty that is beyond most of what people are thinking about. Many individuals, uh, many couples, many families are holding their piece of the puzzle in this church plugging away. And the other group I think about is the people who just simply do not like what they do. The people who just like go to work and just churn it out. But what they are not doing is feeling like they're living in wasted time. Instead, they are praying for their colleagues. They are praying for their customers. They are living and leading and working with integrity, being a signpost to something that is beyond them, showing care and compassion, bringing dignity to those around them. God is commissioning you. God has and will continue to commission you through your passions, your dreams, your skills, the opportunities that present themselves, the environment that you find yourself in to bring the kingdom values, his DNA, the likeness of God into the world around you because there is a city that is hungry. There is a city that is hungry for truth and real beauty. There is a city that is hurting and confused. There is a city that is actually physically hungry this winter. And there's a city that is longing uh, for connection beyond what they have. It is the work of the ambassador to point the way to the one that can solve all of those problems. Connect them to life and life in all of its fullness. And here's uh, the best part for me. It is that you carry your piece of the puzzle as part of God's family. Meaning uh, this, that uh, your baptism and the baptism that we celebrate uh, today of those this evening and those this morning, uh, you are being baptised into a family. You see, the Christian life is not an individualistic pursuit of spirituality. Becoming a Christian is inviting the life of God to come and live within you. And God is intrinsically communal. 
What I mean by that is, is God is three in one. In himself is community. And so as you invite the life of community within you, you are connected with God, and then he connects you with others. You see, the piece of the puzzle that I'm carrying connects to the piece of the puzzle that you are carrying. And this is why church really matters. Because against the odds, that bunch of misfits, the insecure and the outsiders, can actually come together as they follow the way of Jesus and create something so much bigger so much more beautiful, so much more powerful than you will ever be able to do by yourself. You see, you need me and I need you. We need each other. And more than that, this city, your friends, your family, your colleagues, they need us to be connected because without our connection, they only see a tiny little fragment of what the kingdom of God is like. But when we are connected living in loving relationship, living with a deep sense of compassion and care for one another, you start to see a bigger picture as some of the pieces get joined together and together and together and the glory and the beauty of God is revealed. You see, your life matters because it's not just about your life. It is meant for so much more than that. This church matters not just because uh, we matter here in this little patch of Southampton, but our church matters because it's meant for so much more than simply just being our church. It is a signpost to the kingdom of God where God is making all things new. So let me finish um, with this. If you're sitting there thinking, oh gosh, I, I, don't, I don't even know what that looks like. Um, I, I don't even know whether I could do like a, a big job or even a small job, but doing it for God. Um, what I want to say is this, don't count yourself out. You have already been called in. This is not something that you can actually get out of as you follow the way of Jesus. And so uh, this puzzle that God is piecing together, he's going to do it. This is God's kingdom, not my kingdom, not your kingdom, but God's kingdom that he is moving in. And he has graciously and generously invited you to come and get involved. And so how are we going to do that? How do we work out what is it that my peace, what is it the thing that I am called into? What's my purpose ultimately? Uh, Well, let me ask you this. Right now, metaphorically speaking, not literally, uh, my, right now, like what's in your hands? What are the things that you possess? What are the passions that you have? What are the opportunities that have? What are the skills and the training that you have or are uh, going through? Or, or my hunch is that God will use those things to bring about his kingdom purposes. Um, uh, by way of um, extending this particular metaphor and analogy, what we're going to do at this particular point in the talk is we're going to give you, everyone, a piece of this particular puzzle. puzzle. And so um, there should be some buckets coming around. Um, and so take a piece of the puzzle, uh, pass it on, um, uh, and just a couple of things uh, to say about that. Uh, this morning, um, I was hoping for some like prophetic insight into um, what God has um, uh, got in store for people. And uh, someone who actually doesn't regularly come to church um, picked up the piece of the puzzle out of the thousands of pieces, 1,000 pieces that it could have been, uh, and he had his place of work, um, uh, as in like where his office is. And so I'm hoping that some of you get your place of work or your house um, or, or the boy that you fancy or, or something like that, um, just to spice things up. And so we'll just quickly, we'll quickly um, get those going around. So just grab one, pass it on as the band come up. And so as, um, as have most people got? No, we need more buckets. It's very foggy in here. I can't see anything. Um, just as you're, um, as you're uh, grabbing one of those pieces of the puzzle, um, let me just get you to just consider a few questions. Uh, and for some of you, um, 
you, you've been journeying with Jesus for a long time and, and actually you're relatively confident about what uh, your part is and, and how God is, is working in and through you. But it might be that God this evening is prompting you into something, maybe like revealing a part of uh, your, your business, your relationships, your opportunities that you have. And, and for, I know for many of you, um, as you start out in life, particularly professional life at uni and beyond, um, I want you to hold uh, your piece of the puzzle. Um, mine's got a chicken on it because it's um, bigger. Um, and from my son. Um, uh, as you hold your piece of the puzzle, I'd love you to kind of consider some of these questions that are coming up on the screen here uh, before we then uh, celebrate uh, in baptism with one another. Maybe just like slightly prayerfully at this point um, uh, as we start to worship it, it might be that you want to ask some of your some, some ask yourself some of these questions, um, like what are the things that you care about? What are the like God given things that you care about? What are you good at? What are the opportunities that are at hand and in the world around you at the moment? Like what do you have to offer? Is there a particular thing that you've done? You feel like I'm actually quite good at that, and I feel like I could I could use that maybe professionally, maybe uh, as a hobby. Is there a dream that has been planted within you? Like, have you got like a vision, like a sense of like, gosh, like I feel like there's, there's something that, that God is uh, in this. Is there something that you see that isn't right? Is there an injustice that you see in the world? Or is there something that's missing or broken that you see and you just think, gosh, there must be a solution to that. There must be a better way of doing that. Is there a holy discontent within you? And ultimately, uh, and most importantly, it is that last question. What is it that the Spirit is doing around you? Where is the Spirit at work in your life? Where is the Spirit of God moving? What are you noticing? For you are given His Spirit to lead and to guide you. The old is gone and the new is here. You are filled with the life of His Spirit as you rise from those waters and commissioned into your life as an ambassador for His kingdom. And so like this, this is your commissioning and this is also the vision of our church. As you follow the way of Jesus, you are called to play your part in partnering with God as he brings his reconciling, redeeming and renewing love to the world around you. Will you spend your life partnering with him? In Jesus' name, amen.